what do I wait? My hope is in you. We join together in singing our opening hymn, Hark the Glad Sound. sins are forgiven in 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Having heard those gracious words of forgiveness, we stand together and say,
Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The congregation is invited to stand as you are able for the Holy Gospel. This evening we hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Congregation may be seated. <laughs> Zechariah's name itself means the Lord remembers. 
And once Zechariah was himself filled with the promise of grace that was given to him, he prophesied the Lord's remembrance of us all. And this is what he said. The Lord has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham. It's important to know that when the Lord makes a covenant, when he makes a promise with someone, he does not break that promise. He does not go back on his word. And we see this especially with one of the very first covenants the Lord made with a man named Abraham. The Lord promised Abraham nations of descendants. He promised Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and as numerous as the grains of sand on the beach. All while Abraham himself was childless, while he was nearing 80 years old, while his wife was barren. This was a promise that seemed utterly and completely ridiculous to Abraham. And yet he believed the Lord at his word, and the Lord was faithful to him. Many years went by after this promise to Abraham. Many years he waited on the Lord. Many years he lived in his own despair of waiting and wondering, when is the Lord going to fulfill his promise to me? When will I have a son? But the Lord remained faithful to his promise. And from Abraham's wife Sarah, he was blessed with a child, Isaac. And from Isaac came Jacob, and from Jacob the whole people of Israel. The Lord gave hope to Abraham, and he acted in faithfulness to his covenant to him. And this was the hope for Abraham, that God would be faithful and that he would indeed have children as numerous as the stars. But even then, there was hope still to come. And we'll want to keep this story of Abraham in the back of our heads as we move on to the story of Zechariah. Now, Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth, were also childless, like Abraham and Sarah were. And also like Abraham and Sarah, Zechariah and Elizabeth were very old when God promised them a child. Now, Zechariah was doing his own thing his normal daily routine at the temple, his priestly duties. He was offering up incense to go along with the prayers of the people. And then suddenly, it became not like every other day. Instead, a messenger of the Lord, an angel, appears right in front of his very eyes. And Zechariah is absolutely terrified and afraid, as any other God-fearing man would be in that situation. But the messenger, the angel of the Lord, tells him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Upon hearing these words of this messenger, Zechariah's response to this promise was not one of hope or trust. Instead, he actually asks the Lord for a sign, as if this frightening being appearing in front of him wasn't sign enough. He asks, how will I know that this is so? For I myself am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. How is it possible that either of us is going to have a child? So the Lord indulges Zechariah, and he gives him a sign. This is not a sign that I think Zechariah was anticipating or expecting. The Lord made Zechariah lose his voice until the time came when his son was born to him. 
So after this whole scene with the angel, Zechariah emerges from the temple. And people come up to him and they say, Hey, Zechariah, what did you see in there? It must have been some great vision. You were gone quite a while. So then Zechariah replies to them, <laughs> they ask, Are you okay? Maybe he can't hear us either. So then they begin trying to sign to him. And this was Zechariah's life for nine months, unable to speak until that baby boy was born to him. And that baby boy who Zechariah and Elizabeth named John, which means the Lord is gracious. And the Lord would be very gracious indeed to John. Because John grew up to be John the Baptist. The Lord was faithful to his promises. We saw how he was faithful to Abraham. And he was also faithful to Zechariah. And it turns out that all these promises that Zechariah was cherishing in his heart and holding on to, the grace, gracious salvation he was looking forward to, would actually point forward to Jesus. Jesus is the one who graciously forgives us of our sins. Jesus is the one who shines with God's gracious light that overcomes our darkness and our death. Jesus is the one who gives us peace with God. Our silent and fearful despair is overcome only through Jesus. And he grants us wholeness and life. The great thing about hope that's given is it allows us to look forward to the future. It points us forward. It allows us to long for something. And that future, the future that Abraham longed for, that Zechariah longed for, that future was now dawning upon this very people. And John, Zechariah's son, would play a very important role in that unfolding hopeful promise. But John was not the one who redeems. John was not the one who was to buy the people back from their sins. John was not the one who was to be the mighty savior from the house of David. John was not even the one who rescues us from all our enemies, who rescues us from sin, death, and the devil. Instead, John's role was defined completely in humility. Humility as he prepared the way of the one who does all these great things. And so the people ask in their amazement about Zechariah's child. What then will this child become? Zechariah answers as he's speaking to his newborn son. He says, and you child you will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. So John grows up to be the one who prepares the way of the Lord. John's prophetic voice in the wilderness is the one who calls out to all who are walking in their own wilderness of life, those who are walking and abandoned in their barren lands. He calls out to them and he tells them to repent to turn from their old ways and instead turn to the one who is to come, the coming grace that is in Christ Jesus. The one who is coming after him. This Messiah, the one John points to, will also come to remember us in hope of the covenant of grace. John would point to Jesus saying, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And this is the very greatest of God's gifts of grace. His very remembrance of his promises of hope to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to the entire people of Israel. It all comes down to Jesus. That is the complete fulfillment. And Zechariah sings aloud about this coming grace of Christ. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. Jesus is this tender mercy of God. Jesus brings compassion to you and me. He died on the cross to bring that compassion. He paid his life for it. 
and he raised from the dead so that the song of his undying tender compassion to the whole world would be sung for eternity. He takes his place in the world so that none of us may be trapped by our own silent barrenness or our own despair. But instead, we're blessed with hope. And what is it that the Lord will give us to enlighten our despairing hearts and our minds with hope? Well, Zechariah tells us this, that the Lord will give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Now among many people who are still living in despair are the poor, the homeless, the oppressed, the weak, the injured, the disgraced, the forgotten, the cast aside. Jesus, our Lord, brought hope to such as these. Jesus also remembers all those who are ungodly sinners, He remembers us in our own despair and our weakness when we, on our own accord, could not find or earn our own righteousness. But instead, we were given that gift of grace through faith in Jesus' life, in Jesus' death, in his resurrection. And now through Jesus, you and I are numbered among all the offspring of Abraham. We are among those as numerous as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand on the beach. So now through Jesus Christ, you and I no longer be silent. But instead, we will boldly confess the name of Jesus and we'll live in his promise of hope and we'll bring that promise to the whole world. Christ has come to save us. Christ has come to forgive our sins. Christ has come to shine light over the darkness and over death. And most importantly, Christ has come to reconcile you to God, your Father, and to reconcile you with one another. Jesus gives us hope. Jesus gives us hope to believe that he's going to come again and that creation will be fully restored. And join with me in the confession of our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your people waited long in hope for the fulfillment of your promise to send the Messiah, the Savior. As the days drew near for the Messiah's birth, you told Zechariah and Elizabeth that their son John would prepare the way of the Lord. As we prepare to celebrate the Savior's birth with Zechariah and Elizabeth and all of the saints, we rejoice in the fulfillment of your promise. O God and Savior, fill us with hope and guide us into the way of peace. Almighty God, Advent is a season of hope and a time of repentance, a time to remember our need for a Savior. Even though we do not deserve your love and mercy, in grace you sent your Son to save us. Through his death and resurrection, we have forgiveness for our sins and the hope of eternal life in your presence. 
All of your promises find their yes in Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. Fill us with hope and guide us into the way of peace. Almighty God, during this Advent season, there are many people who feel no hope. They struggle with illness, grief, and loss. Bring them help and comfort through the promises of your holy word, and according to your gracious will, bring them healing. Fill them with confident faith and the certain knowledge that you always keep your promises. Although earthly hope and promises may fail, in the birth of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, we have hope that will not fail, our God and Savior. Fill us with hope and guide us into the way of peace. Almighty God, help us by your Spirit to serve others in love and to share with them the hope that we have in Jesus. Lead us to true repentance and strengthen us through the study of Scripture so that we can then strengthen others with the sure and certain promises of your word, our God and Savior. Fill us with hope and guide us into the way of peace. Almighty God, as we prepare to celebrate our Lord's first advent, his birth in Bethlehem, we also look forward to his second advent, his return on the last day. By your grace through faith in our Lord, we have the sure and certain hope of eternal life in your presence. Jesus has promised, I am coming soon. With joy we anticipate the fulfillment of that promise our God and Savior. Fill us with hope and guide us into the way of peace. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, he took the cup after he had eaten supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Thanks be to God, the gifts of God for the people of God.
true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul, now and unto life everlasting. Live and depart in that peace and hope. Amen. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Amen. Ha, ha, ha.